tonight. Uh, yeah, what do you guys got? Just overall thoughts on just your overall focus after a big win over UCLA and as you guys are ready for a run trip? Well, we, we had a great weekend. It wasn't this UCLA. I mean, SC is a really good team, too. And, and we played well at home and, you know, is what you, what you hope to do. And, you know, we're excited to get on the road and, and keep continuing to build. And, you know, we got a real challenge ahead of us this, uh, this week. You know, both Washington schools. And, you know, I mean, it's no secret that they, they play better than us down here. So... It's going to be a real challenge. This will be the first time that you're playing a repeat opponent. How does that change the scout? Is it heavily based on that game? I mean, you you, you know, I mean, we, we played them so recent. I mean, it'll be interesting to see, I mean, how many changes have, you know, both teams have really done. I, I'm, I'm assuming not much, you know, and, uh, you know, this time of year, it's, you know, you're kind of locked into some of the things you do and, and kind of your identity as a team and, you know, your opponent is as well. So you know, we'll go in there and, you know, if there's a couple of adjustments we have to make, you know, we'll, we'll try to make them. But for the most part, I, I'm sure most teams will probably play pretty similar. Are you the type of coach that'll bring up that last game in terms of motivation or any of that? Well, I mean, I mean for sure. I, mean, I think, you know, I, I don't know, I think you're always looking for extra motivation, but I mean, I'm bringing it up more from a practical standpoint that you got your ass kicked. And, you know, I mean, that, that, that's, there's no other way to put it. I mean, there's no... There's no reason not to talk about it, and uh, you know I, I don't, I don't. And if guys need extra motivation for playing a team that kicked their ass, then you know I, I guess, I guess that's a problem in and of itself. How do you feel about your three-point defense overall, and what do you try to do this time around to kind of negate some of those shots? For you? Well, you know we, we got to do a good job, you know, playing to our strengths and understanding what their strengths are. And obviously they're, uh, you know, they're a great three-point shooting team that really values that, and they have great shooters, and, you know, which is, you know. To, to take away those threes is you know easier said than done you know because gay they're their inside guys also a pretty good player as well and, and you know and bomba is a he's a really good downhill driver so they present a lot of problems and you know we're going to go in and and hopefully you know play much better and much tougher than we did last time around what what, what stood out to you about muhammad gay the last time you guys played against him? i mean i know he's really talented and just you know he's really he just was you know really engaged in the game and uh you know, I thought he was really opportunistic for some of the plays he made, you know, whether it's a jump shot or a corner three or a drive to the basket or a cut to the basket or catching a lob on, a, on an alley-oop or offensive rebounding. He just impacted the game in a lot of areas. Two games in of using more of the small ball lineup, how do you think it's gone? And do you feel that it can be the regular thing now? Well, I mean, we're 2-0. We're, we're, we're and, and, you know, so obviously, you know, you're probably feeling that it went okay. Um... You know, we're still going to play, you know, our big lineup. And, you know, I love having two bigs out there. But, you know, we're also going to be mindful of developing that smaller lineup and, uh, and you know, and, and making sure that it can function at a high level out there because I feel really good when it's out on the floor. When we look at the minutes from Dylan and Henry or lack of this past week, do you sit them down and talk to them and say, look, this is kind of where we're at? I mean, I think they both know that this is a development year, you know, and, and you know, that I've also told them, you know, that, you know, at some point, I wish somebody would, would step up and kind of take that take that role over because I do think we need an eighth and ninth guy. You know, and it's not that I'm, you know, close-minded to that, but you know, as you get further into these seasons and these games get a little bit tougher, sometimes you know, when a when a young player hasn't played so much, it's not really fair fair to throw them into the fire. You know, because there is going to be some struggle. So I'm mindful of both those things, and you know, I, I wish it was a situation where everybody could play more. But, you know, unfortunately, it's just not the reality of our current situation. Boswell had that one fast break opportunity in the first half where he kind of got to the three-point line and hesitated. What do you want him to do? I mean, which game are you talking about? Against UCLA. I mean, I, I would have to see the clip. You know, I mean, I mean, Kylan's really coming along, and, you know, he's far from perfect, and he's far from a finished product. Um, so, you know, I, I want him to be aggressive, but I also want him to understand he's got to be mindful that, you know, he's the point guard, and he needs to you know, kind of control the game and control the decision-making he's on the floor. I think this was a good opportunity for Pella to uh, kind of play loose, play free out there. He seemed a lot more fluid than in past games coming off the bench. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, you know giving somebody a, kind of a, a, a fresh start or coming from a different perspective helps him. And, you know, I mean, you guys know Pella's a really good player, and, and, uh, and you know, I think he's, he's played pretty well. You know, I just think it's one of those deals. Expectations are really, really high for him. And, uh, and as I've said all along, I think he's a, a little bit of a slow starter and a strong finisher, and hopefully we're, we're seeing that uptick now. You guys have a loss with Cedric in the starting lineup. What works just about that rotation? I mean, fellow? only played a few games, and probably all of them have been at home. So it's, it's a, that's usually a winning formula for a lot of guys. You might be able to start you some of those games, and, uh, 
and, and, and win some games at home. I don't know. I mean, I, I really haven't thought about it too much more. I'm, I'm happy with where Cedric's at. I like the energy he's playing with. I like the confidence he plays with. I love coaching him, and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to him having a strong finish for this season. Coach, bring, Coach bringing in Shimmy as a, as a graduate assistant, what has that done for the locker room? You know, I mean, I think Shimmy's still finding his way around here. I mean, obviously, he just got here and, you know, never really been to Tucson before and is getting his apartment set up. So, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, the, the full effects, you know, are probably far from there. But, but Shimmy, uh, he's a winner. And, uh, I mean, that's one of the things I can say about him. He's literally the all-time leader in wins in the history of NCAA Division One college basketball. And uh, he's got a winning mentality, and he's really smart, and he's a great guy to be around. So I only see a bunch of positives coming from it.